Good morning. I have Granger's mustache. Someone just woke up and she wants celery. She loves crunchy vegetables. So today's cleaning day and I want to do this as an environmentally themed vlog. Sophie is feeling a little better. I don't know if that means anything to be honest with you, but at least day to day she is mostly not struggling. Her struggle is with her heart rate and her breath, but she's mostly feeling good. I was still are not expecting a massively long lifespan based on what the predictions say and what the vet said, but who knows? Those things are kind of so today's. I slept for 10 hours. I've been sleeping a lot since I gave birth. Maybe because we wake up through the night. I'm not sure is that just me, but I literally sleep quite a bit in order to feel fully rested. That could be also because I'm exercising. But today's vlog will be uh, we'll talk about and I'll do a tryout haul for uh, organic cotton clothing. So we'll talk about organic cotton and in general shopping and I'll talk about other environmental ways to improve your household. One way to be a little more environmental is obviously either to be vegan or to eat as little animal products as possible and to make your own juices. <laughs> And baby just started to like dates. She really hated dates up until now, which is so surprising considering how much I love dates. She did not like dates up until yesterday. Yesterday she started really for the first time not spitting them out. She wouldn't even accept them as an ingredient. If I hide them in something, she wouldn't eat the whole thing. Now all of a sudden she turned a new leaf. She's eating dates. Maybe it's because she got more teeth. Finally. And I want to show you the flowers. Those are wildflowers from around the house. It's so amazing that in fall you can get that in Texas. And some of them are edible. If you know which ones are edible, let me know. I know that rosemary is edible for sure. This one is rosemary, the small little... This one... The small purple one is rosemary. I'm pretty certain that most of them are edible, but if you know how to identify them, let me know. And I have to show you something which also ties in with the environmental stuff. You know those big mature coconuts? I've been drinking the water from them and I found some crazy cool recipes to do with them uh, so that I don't waste the meat. Hold on. I will include the recipe in a little bit but basically you can make it into a cake basically oh, someone got in here you can make it into a cake layer or um it's just very versatile you can make it savory and it tastes like omelet or you can make it more like a cake and i'll make a little bit of frosting and put two layers together in small cookies maybe kind of sugar cinnamon tahini frosting or jam something like that and i'll cut it up in small cookies uh, this one is sweet and I made one savory. The baby ate almost all of it. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is shopping and environmental shopping. Now, I've been trying to change my ways of how I shop and how I do things, but with the move and everything, I actually have less farmer's markets here. 
So it is being a challenge with certain produce items that come in plastic and stuff, but with clothing and things, there is options. Um, thrifting for certain things. of stuff from packed i was just it was so funny because i was just researching an organic brand the night before and i went to bed it was organic brand for underwear and the next morning i received from uh, email from them would i like to picture them on my channel and i said oh yes i like the synchronicity so it, it is a really cool website i wanted to let you know about with actually a lot of really good things and sales and deals like you can buy three men t-shirt but really cool organic cotton men t-shirt for i think 30 dollars um so 10 each and it, they have underwear because one thing you want to buy for sure you know, obviously for me to me is underwear i know maybe some people trip for underwear but i got a few things and i want to show you so i got organic pajamas for baby they're made all of organic cotton with I think a touch of elastin so they're nice and stretchy and they have such cool um, little baby pajamas and here is the bottoms and they have really good deals if you buy two at a time and then I got her training pads if someone knows how to use those also let me know I haven't researched it but it sounded like the next step Training pants, I should say, not pants. It's a pack of three and they're real cute. And I got me two uh, pairs of underwear. They have really cool hoodies there, dresses, um, socks, all the like leggings, yoga bras. I was so tempted to get yoga bras, but uh, I got some other things. Uh, so I got underwear. I think I got a medium. They're fair trade, uh, cotton, research. If we buy cotton a lot, most cotton is GMO. So it's contributing to uh, negatively to the environment and the farming practices and the farmers who are, who are involved in it. So trying to shop organically is really, really important and cool. And this is uh, packed organic. I'm pretty certain I have a coupon and I will list it below and I'll show you other things I've been doing more environmentally and this underwear they had really pretty underwear but I selected the medium because I don't like to feel my underwear like if it's a little bit too tight on me or something I just feel like I'm in prison or something like I have to rip out of socks and sleeves and necks and underwear and weird like that and I got a t-shirt dress I'm gonna put it on and show you and I also got this t-shirt dress it is considered pajamas they're gonna like it around the house I don't like it for outside but Johnny doesn't so I think I'm just gonna stick to the inside of the house I've been wanting to wear a t-shirt dress kind of like a boyfriend t-shirt oversized t-shirt it's long in the back and a little shorter at the front and it's a little baggy obviously it's not as flattering as if it was more form-fitted but it's really comfortable and it's organic so it feels very I don't know I tend to like to wear organic things when I can buy organic I do because it makes me feel all bushy inside the cotton and let's go show you another thing I do environmentally so one thing I've always been uh, doing is I use hand towels and I put them in a basket and typically I would have a trash basket on the floor but because baby will get to it now for now I'm using that for the used towels and it's important that you have it in a basket form so that they don't get moldy inside these braids and that way you don't use paper towels at all for me paper towels are one thing that i just cannot stand <laughs> and that's always been something i've been using through the years that plus i'm a considerate shopper i'm not i don't shop for fun or i don't buy things in excess unless i make an honest mistake but i don't just shop to shop and the next thing that is really cool is a set of straws 
so that you don't have to use um, um, those uh, um, plastic straws which are really bad for the environment and for the animals I'm missing two one is in the wash uh, those are metal straws you can get metal straws and that reduces your use of plastic straws especially if you take them with you places and that's another thing I've kind of implemented into my life plus the shopping bags and implementing produce bags those are my small contributions I'm making baby steps I have to be honest I being vegan is three million times easier than being uh, lower waste because everything is kind of wrapped in plastic and it's really difficult to get away from it especially for me if I need to get lettuce I have to get lettuce because my health depends on certain items that I eat and there I can't compromise so it is a very challenging thing to to reduce your waste but I'm doing it in my small ways and I feel that I don't need to be a perfectionist as long as I keep making steps towards having a more sustainable life that is fine eventually I'll be gardening and I'll get to a place where I'm using very little plastic but now I still have to buy certain produce items because I am picky about my food and I need to buy fruits and veggies and if I'm not buying the wrapped ones i'll be starving <laughs> so let's talk about uh, date fast i always get so many questions because it's such an in integral part of my life and i'm such a someone said you're my favorite date ambassador jesse <laughs> seriously i work for uh dates <laughs> but um <clears throat> when uh when you eat a lot of fruit it is good to listen to if you're craving salty usually you're craving minerals so it's good to before i personally don't necessarily crave salty because my body now craves greens but before you have given your body enough greens it doesn't even know what's craving it's craving salty so you balance certain fruits especially dates with greens one type of green i have during the intermittent fasting phase it doesn't bother me that much especially if you juice it it's even better this one is blended it's celery and lemon i share it a lot another way to do it and cucumber this one has you can add parsley ginger uh, and all kinds of um, spinach other things either strain it juice it or um, blend it however it works with lemon uh, the bitterness is offset lemon offsets the bitterness so you can have a lot of greens and they taste good another thing is to blend greens with bananas bananas make it creamy and sweet again offsets the bitterness and sometimes i like a, a more of a savory variety it's not sweet and it's not uh, tart it's not tangy uh, but it is with coconut milk so you blend uh, your typical greens kale and um, parsley etc with coconut milk a little bit of black pepper and it becomes really delicious now i just received a, um, a box of california dates i just bought a box of california dates recently and i ate the yesterday I ate them with my with my celery crunch it's so good now in California I used to get softer ones but due to shipping I'm sure this is as good as it will get unless I get a little softer next but I would put this on uh, um, I would slice iceberg I'll slice iceberg lettuce and I will put them uh, on top of the slices and it becomes this sandwich that's crunchy, sweet, watery and extremely satisfying. I just love it. Dates on top of iceberg lettuce wedges or whatever it's called. And that was dinner for me. I literally wanted that for dinner and I had a kale savory smoothie after and i'll tell you why because dates do not go well together with lemon 
they will, if you eat a lot of dates, and I ate over 20 dates, um, and then you have lemon, it will help the digestion of the sugars. It's not a very, very good uh, combination, so it's good to, uh, to not combine lemon and dates in one meal. That's why I change it up and I find other ways to have greens. The lemon is during the day and before my meal. And then with my meal, if it's very sweet, I just uh, have it without the day, without the lemon because uh, good digestion is important, feeling good is important, sleeping deep. Uh, I've noticed that if your digestion is off, sometimes you don't even know it is off and you don't sleep well. Uh, throughout my pregnancy, you know how pregnancy is the time when you have uh, stomach acid. I was perfect because I didn't eat oil. Oil is what causes uh, the acid in pregnancy, I'm convinced. I ate very hot and spicy food, meaning hot sauce from, I had the sodium free hot sauce, but I pretty much stayed most of the time without any stomach acid due to how careful I was with my diet and my oils and fats and so forth and i've noticed that if you have insomnia oftentimes it is because either your liver is working very hard or your stomach you may not even know it and it's keeping you up that's why it's important digestion not just to feel good and to have no stomach discomfort but also because of a lot of other processes in the body Intermittent fasting, I get a lot of questions because it's uh, almost very popular now, but it's also very controversial. It shouldn't be, but it is. Uh, I think if you have a way of eating that works for you, then don't even bother. Uh, naturally, we are drawn, I'm in general the person that is. I first go against the grain to test things and then I uh, find things to do. So if I'm told to eat three meals a day, I'm going to question it. That's just my personality. Since I was a child, I was a rebel in the sense that I do not conform to the norm. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's just that I personally don't take things for, I don't assume things to be uh, true just because that's how it's been done. That to me is not good enough explanation. I like to test them. So when I do things, they're usually kind of unusual. And I've accepted that about myself. I don't, I don't mind how I am. I don't take insane pride in it. I'm glad I'm this way, but it's just a matter of fact how I am. I don't assume things to be... Um... Hold on, let me put you on the... I never believed that we're supposed to eat three meals a day or we're supposed to uh, eat on schedule. I do believe that that's good for some people. I mean, probably it's, it's based on your personality and on your physiology. We all kind of have different needs and different ways of processing reality and that changes how we digest and assimilate food. I really think everything is a little more spiritual than it is physical. So the way we process and assimilate information is how we really deal with um, the physical matter because nothing is really physical, it's just um, levels of density. Uh, so we all need something different because of our mind really, because of our soul really, not because of our actual physical body. The physical body follows the vibrations and the energy. So if you're not doing, oftentimes if you're not doing well, if you're not feeling well, it is because of the mind. The mind dictates everything and the physical follows. Um, the reason why we do practice uh, fasting and all of that is so that we can keep the body clean so we can tune into higher vibrations, uh, download higher information, um, stay on that frequency, radio frequency if you will, of uh, higher information. So we're operating on a higher level. That's why we try to purify the body, try to uh, eat things that are at a higher frequency, raw vegetables, fruits, etc. Uh, raw herbs, wild foraging is very high frequency um, plants. Uh, flowers are extremely high frequency. Um, berries, wild berries, if you forage, is very high frequency. But in the cities you can buy things, just vegetables and fruits. Uh, fruit is the highest frequency of the 
common human foods because there is no karma involved in it, there is, you don't harm anything by collecting fruit, the trick of continuous living, it is biologically designed for us, we can easily harvest. So back to intermittent fasting, if you're not happy with how you feel now, then look into it. You don't have to change anything. It's not the way for everybody. There's no one way for everybody. And again, because of our mind, some people are, for example, not ready to not eat meat. They will not try it because of the mind. I don't think it's because it's not good for us. It's just, it's only not good for you if you cannot benefit from it. If you cannot tune into the frequency of something, you're not gonna understand it. You're not gonna um, harmonize with it. So vegan, for some people, is effortless, if you've noticed. And other people right now, in the vegan community, I try to stay away from it. Everybody is like, there is big YouTubers going back to eating meat, they don't do well. And the reason why they don't do well is because... And I just wanted to talk, it's turning into a talkie video. I wanted to talk a little bit about why so many vegans... Um, I um, opened one video about someone that almost died on a vegan diet or like the vegan diet doesn't work for them. And then I'm bombarded daily with hundreds of videos of uh, people. So why doesn't it work for people? <sighs> to me, it's very simple. It's if you never went to Whole Foods without being restrictive, you just naturally, intuitively end up on an intuitive Whole Foods diet, you've never even gotten to an actual healthy diet. Fruits and vegetables as the base of your diet. If you've never gone there, if you've always eaten processed foods, um, overly prepared foods, uh, things like that, you just never transition. That's one. If you don't refine your body, purify your body, you will not refine your thoughts. We are fine tuning the frequency we operate on, uh, all of us. Uh, we're trying to rid ourselves of. Um, of ignorance we're trying to refine our body we're trying to tap into uh, wisdom and that happens over a long period of time even if you uh, are not offended by me saying that even over uh, thousands and thousands hundreds of thousands of lives so it takes a while there are people that thrive on the vegan diet obviously because their mind doesn't operate on a lower frequency. I see a lot of vegans, their minds are overly logical, so of this physical uh, brain. Uh, so they're not pulling any type of wisdom. They're operating on a lower frequency uh, brainwave thought pattern and they overthink. Because this is a little bit like what I eat in a day. I started the day with this coffee. I was excited to buy it. Uh, because um, it's um, yellow cut to white, so it's like an heirloom variety. But what it is, it's called uh, um, it's called it's called pulp natural process, which means that they leave the coffee cherry, which is really why is it not focusing? Uh, they leave the coffee cherry on um, on the coffee beans and dry it in a, a process of fermenting the beans and the cherry stays on it. The cherry is very sweet, it's a fruit. It's and the beans are the seed. So it makes it sweet and honey-like. So it's called honey processing. Um, the whole pulp on top of the bean is the honey uh, processing, uh, it's the honey processing because it leaves a little bit of a honey aroma and sometimes it is sweet actually uh, because of the fruit in the coffee fruit. So I better finish my, uh, I think I cut off my thought uh, on intermittent fasting, but if you have questions, post them below and I will finish it or answer it in a different video. And um, um, I wanted to update you on Sophie. Let's see if she's in the other room. She is fit. She's doing a lot better. She doesn't have those symptoms that scared us, but the, the vets were so weird about telling us that she, she's Sophie. She, they must have taken her in uh, Johnny's mom place. Uh, she, um, she's doing a lot better. She is, we're not taking her out on walk. She's not in the, uh, going out in the heat. We've been 
using AC this whole summer so she's doing better because it's cool she's cool so hopefully she'll live I pretty much spent probably three four days in like a really like sad place I cried the entire three four days when we thought she's gonna just die within that week it was really really tough because she's young and I came to accept whatever it is uh, after like you can continue crying uh, with such sorrow uh, for too long but I literally couldn't do anything I just cried and um, I've come to accept it it is possible that she doesn't uh, have a very long life but it's also possible that she sticks around for another year or two or three whatever she wants to do uh, but she's doing a little better she doesn't have this hyper breathing and her heart is not racing so maybe uh, hopefully she could recover uh, she's doing better and we'll see we've been told by vets many times that she would just die drop and die right there so maybe she has something else in mind but that's on Sophie because some of you love Sophie and want to know about Sophie so she feels better and she she is around the sad thing about her is that she has the spirit of a like a very active dog and she can't exercise and be that very active dog because um, uh, her body doesn't support her spirit so she we don't take her to play dates because her hips will go out she jumps to her she's a really really intense dog she does not care about her body and she just she's a maniac and uh, <laughs> she can't do many things that she needs to do or wants to do because of her body limitations so although she has had a good life and it's still a good life she can't be the maniac she wants to be so in her next life we know she's gonna be a, a raging puppy maniac probably a male cause she's so alpha male and uh, for now she's just gonna enjoy uh, Johnny's mom also has a little um, a dachshund chihuahua mix who is really really cute smart and he's also an alpha male so she's submissive to him even though he's this little so now she has a little bit of friend and someone that she she can spend time with so things are good for Sophie but uh, you know she doesn't get her insane energy out that's the only thing that she doesn't get to do but you know it's no has it perfect <laughs>